Hi, and welcome to Choosing a U.S. Institution. This is Stacy coming to you live from Education USA in Nassau, Bahamas. As I said, my name is Valeria Stacy Fox. I'm an Education USA advisor. Did you know that there are Education USA centers with free services in over 170 countries? Be sure to reach out to your nearest advisor for more information on studying in the United States. Visit http colon slash forward slash forward slash www.educationusa.info to find an advisor nearest you. This webinar is for you. We want to thank you for taking the time to log into this webinar, and we hope you will stay with us for the next 30 to 45 minutes. Do it as an investment to yourself. This webinar is especially for you. If this webinar is for you, if you can name fewer than 10 colleges or universities in the United States. If you are thinking that a top-ranked institution is automatically the best choice, if you are not enjoying the search and are having difficulty narrowing down your choices, if you do not know where to begin, this should be an exciting session. If you have questions, please note them and we will take them at the end of the presentation. All right, let's get this webinar rolling. Why is this webinar important? The choice of which college or university you will be applying to may be the most important part of the U.S. admission process. Even an excellent student will be rejected from certain colleges and universities if he or she is not a good fit. You want to only apply to institutions where you honestly believe you will be successful academically and socially. This is a place you graduate from, a place you will love, a place where you will contribute to the campus community. When and how to start your research. It is never too late to start. But the most ideal time to start your college search is at least 12 to 18 months prior to the start of your U.S. study. You should begin your search 12 to 18 months prior to, academic year, to the academic year in which you hope to enroll. You are going to ask yourself, why do you want to study in the United States? You're going to get to know yourself. Know what you want academically, personally, and financially. Your first step, know why you want to study in the USA. Flexibility, the quality of the programs. State-of-the-art facilities, student-centered approach, critical thinking, English language practice, value for your money, working closely with professors, the international experience of networking, and of course, in the U.S., you have over 4,500 plus choices to choose from. Remember that the degree you are seeking is part of a much bigger picture. The degree is not a goal like a trophy. It is more like a passport. How will this degree contribute to your long-term goal? Think about achieving your long-term goal. What is it that you want? You want degree? or certification, how it will enhance your life and your family. Think about the skills and the knowledge you will gain. Consider the employment opportunities and the experiences that you will have. Of course, too, is the network opportunity as you learn to, and you get to know stu about students and meet students from all over the world. Know yourself. Where do you start in choosing a college or university in the United States? 
take time to know yourself first. What will make my application stand out? What are my personal strengths and weaknesses? What is my personality and learning style? Make sure you know your academic status. Will you be considered a first year undergraduate, a transfer student, a graduate student, a non-resident, for example? How difficult or rigorous were your previous studies and how did you do? What is your GPA or your grade point average? It's very important to know. Think about it being converted on the U.S. 4.0 scale. Most schools will do the conversion in-house. Some schools will have you send your transcripts off to a third-party um, consulting company. Be prepared for that. How strong is your English proficiency? Do you have community service or work experience? Do you have talent as an artist or an athlete? Do you come from a unique background, or do you have an amazing story to tell? What kind of schools will be looking for someone like you? And of course, now is the time for you to know what you want and what you need. Academically, personally, and financially. And finally, there are over 4,500 quality accredited universities and colleges in the United States to choose from. What are you looking for academically? What degree are you seeking? What are you hoping to study? Major, minor, or concentration? Do you want a more rigid or flexible program? What types of professors are you hoping to work with? What facilities or equipment will you need for your studies? These are some of the questions you should be asking yourself. What courses do you want to take? Do you prefer a small class where the professors will get to know you well, or large lecture halls where hundreds of students are learning from the top-notch research being done on campus? Will you, need a will you need a tutor or any other special services? There are over 4,500 universities to choose from. And trust me, each one of those colleges or universities will have a combination of these questions. So you need to get to know yourself and think about what, this, what is your best fit. Ask yourself, what will be the best fit for me? Where do you start in choosing a college or university in the United States? Take time to know yourself. What do I want to study? Does the college or university have my major? That's like the first question you should ask yourself. Do I want to attend a community college or a four-year institution? Do I want an associate degree, a bachelor, or a graduate degree? Do I want an urban, rural, or suburban environment? What size college? A small college, a medium, or a large? What is my learning style? Again, ask yourself, what is the student-teacher ratio? What are the admissions requirements? Do I need to take the SAT or ACT? What about my GPA? And what about my language skills? What type of support is available for international students? Example, tutoring and subject clinics. Believe it or not, many universities are many universities provide tutoring and subject clinics free of charge for international students. Types of U.S. institutions. Academically, it is important to consider the type and size of institution that would fit you best. The United States offers a variety of options. Liberal art colleges, which are small private schools with a well-rounded curriculum in critical thinking, speaking, and writing in the humanities and sciences, with a focus on the undergraduate student. 
Public universities tend to be research driven and have more graduate and post postgraduate opportunities. Public universities are also often much larger and rely on subsidies from their respective state governments. Community colleges offer associate degree programs, certification, and a limited and a limited number of bachelor degrees in technical fields and trades, such as air traffic control, nursing, hospitality, and cooking, tourism. Community colleges offer students an open access model where it come, when it comes to admissions and low tuition rates. Many students start at a community college and then transfer to a four-year institution to complete their bachelor degree in what is called a two plus two plan. If you're interested in a particular school, definitely speak to them about a two plus two plan. They may have a list of community colleges that you can begin with and you can transfer almost painstakingly um, over to your four-year institution. Then you have women's colleges that have facilities that are tailored for women, stellar female role models, and the graduating women proved to be more successful than those who attended co-ed institutions. The United States also offers institutes of technology, academics of arts and design, and other special institutions with a more narrow, focused, rigorous, and competitive learning environment. There are 106 historically black colleges and universities, or, or HSBCUs, in the United States that are a source of accomplishment and great pride for the African American community, as well as the entire nation. HSBC, HB, HBCU schools often have culturally aware and progressive curricula. A handful of institutions are considered work colleges, where students have the opportunity to fund their education by working on a ranch, a farm, office, or campus facility. There are also many accredited programs, online or in combination with online learning. In addition, there are hundreds of professional schools such as law schools, business schools, and medical schools in the United States, offering highly selective and world-renowned programs. Open your mind to all the possibilities of study in the U.S. So if you can take a look at the screen, you have over 500 plus liberal arts colleges, over 600 plus public universities, public universities, and you may hear public universities also refer to as state colleges and universities. You have over 1,130 community colleges, 60 plus women colleges, and 30 plus institutes of technology and polytechnics. There's a wide range of opportunity available in the U.S. What are you looking for personally? This is the fun part. What is a good location for networking in your field? Where is there more opportunity? What, settling, what setting do you prefer? Urban city with a vibrant scene? Main Street America in a small town or, suburb, or suburb? or a rural or remote place where there are few distractions? What activities or clubs do you want to participate in? Sports, religious, student associations, sororities and fraternities? Do you want to experience all the seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall? What cost of living is in your budget? Do you want to be near a community that is like you or do you prefer diversity and experiencing a different culture? Trust me, there is something there for everyone. Ask yourself, do I prefer on-campus housing or off-campus housing? Which region do you wish to study? In the West, the Midwest, the South, or Northeast? Get familiar with the typical weather conditions of that region year-round. What types of activities are available for students? Is there a Greek life? Do I want a pledge? What type of sport, music program, art? Are there study abroad opportunities? Is diversity important to me? What division sport team does the university have? Or varsity team? 
Remember that you have thousands of choices. From Hawaii to New Hampshire, from the biggest of cities to the smallest of towns. Now, here's the big question. What are you looking for financially? Start by finding out what the total cost would be to attend a certain university. The total cost includes tuition, fees, living expenses, room and board, books and supplies, international travel to and from, and local transportation, health insurance, and more. Then figure out what your personal and family contribution can be. Have you been saving? Next, assess what financial assistance the university offers to international students in the form of academic or talent scholarships, tuition waivers, work study, graduate assistantships, etc. Determine how much you are eligible for and can anticipate receiving based on your academic record test scores, athletic and artistic ability, and proven financial needs. This will determine what the projected next, next cost would be for this university. How much would it cost you per year? How many years do you plan on studying there? Those are very important questions to ask yourself. So let's take a look. Total cost. Remember, you have to consider your personal funding, and then your financial assistance, whatever financial assistance is available to scholarships, both from the college and locally, from your, maybe your government or there are scholarships available to private institutions in your country. You can look at your test scores, whether or not they make you eligible for any of the scholarships, um, academic scholarships that many, many, many universities offer to students. So make sure you stay on top of your test scores. And when you say test scores, they're usually looking at your SAT or ACT scores. So please be vigilant in, in paying attention to when you take your exam and how well you do on those exams. And of course, they take a look at your GPA also. And then of course, there's the athletic and artistic ability. So if you are an athlete or you have artistic ability, there's usually a different means of getting a scholarship, but the way to do that is make sure you start out as early as possible. Maybe your coach or your um, art teacher um, have connections and have um, somebody they can reach out to. Um, reach out directly and find out how that school prefer you to um, submit your athletic um, time if you're a runner. Um, your details on how well you've done athletically um, or your um, portfolio if you're an artist, please be sure to follow up with that early as opposed to late because the scholarships are taken very quickly and there's usually um, a formal submission that you have to do, especially for music also. Please be aware that if you're uh, a music student, you'll have to submit or you'll have to audition and that may take some time and they may have set time, so please be aware of that. So after you've taken your total, your total cost minus your personal funding, minus your financial assistance available, then you will have your projected next cost. So what are you looking for financially? Can I afford to attend? That's a big question. You will have to show proof um, in order to get your visa that you can afford to attend the university that you um, have selected. Do I need financial assistance? And is there international scholarships available? That's a big question and most schools are happy to provide that information for you. Is there work opportunity on campus? That's also another means to supplement your, your income and help you get through the school year. It may pay for books, it may pay for some of your housing. Um, so inquire, ask um, the international admissions counselors um, realistically. What are the opportunities um, to, you know, to work on campus and how much you can hope to, to make? 
Now, we have many search tools available for you, search tools and resources. So once you've asked yourself these questions and answered most of them, you can utilize the many search tools and resources available to help you find the right school for you. So, to your school. Speak to your guidance counselor. They're a wealth of information. They're very familiar with the process, and they'll be able to help you, you know, navigate the system. Ask other persons you know who have attended college or is presently in college. They may be able to give you some wonderful pointers. Collect flyers, brochures, and literature at your school. College fairs. Attend college fairs and collect information, join their mailing list, complete application on site, um, find out as much as you can. You have to do your research. Now, there's a lot of, of um, information available on the internet. Of course, educationusa.state.gov provides the most accurate, up-to-date information available. Utilize the resources. Go to bigfutureoncollegeboard.com. Again, meant much, a lot of information available to students. Petersons.com, PrincetonReview.com, CollegeWeeklive.com, CapEx.com, and many more. And of course, education, contact your Education USA Advising Center. For those of you who, may not, who do not have an advising center in your country, contact the nearest one. They will be happy to assist you. Okay, so it is important to chart your options. This will help you narrow your choices as you search, and, you will also, and it will also help you keep good notes, which will prove to be invaluable when you're writing, writing your application essays about why you are choosing certain universities. So here you, we have um, on the screen, a very simple chart in order for you to keep track of the universities that you're interested in. Again, we're going to you divide them up into your academic, your personal, and financial um, goals, and you make your list and you, you make your notes as to how these a particular school meets your academic, personal, and financial goals. Make sure to keep track of deadlines, test dates, and uh, other requirements. Your next goal, after you have your whole list of the many schools that you're interested in, then you're going to do some research and narrow your choices. That's right, more research. But the, the idea is to create a short list of five to ten schools that you feel are the best fit for you and that you are likely to be accepted to. Be sure that there are a few safe schools on your short list schools you are sure to be accepted into. We all want to be in the best school, and trust me, these schools are, there are over 4,500 schools to apply to. So don't get caught up on the rankings. The rankings are there as a guideline, but there are many, many, many great schools in the U.S. And so make sure your, your short list includes what is the best fit for you. Your next step. Register and prepare for required standardized tests. And so when we say required standardized tests, think about what we're saying. We're talking SATs, SAT subject tests, the ACT, um, the TOEFL or IELTS if you, if you um, have to prove your language uh, proficiency. Make sure that you've taken these tests or that you're taking the test in time to meet the required deadlines. Complete your application packages and, of course, apply on time. Let's review. Know why you want to study in the U.S. Think about all the great opportunities that the, are you studying in the U.S. provide you. Flexibility, great the state-of-the-art facilities, um, great professors, many opportunities. Know yourself. Know and understand what you are bringing to the table. Create a resume. This helps you look at yourself realistically. And so you will have right at your, dis at your disposal your GPA, 
all of your exams that you've taken, um, all of your work experiences, all of your community services, those are the things that should be showing up on your resume. And I really think, we like to think of your resume as your calling card. So be sure to update your resume as often as possible. Come on. What happened here? And of course, the next thing for you to do is to consider what, what you want academically, financially, Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So sorry, we've had a brief uh, issue with communication, uh, but those things happen, and so we roll with it. So let's continue. So know yourself. We we talked about that, and know what you're looking for academically, personally, and financially. And then now your choices. And enjoy the search. This is an exciting time for you. This is the start of the rest of your life, and there's so many exciting experiences that await you. So have fun with the search. Think about dream. I, that's what I tell my students. I tell them to dream. Think about exactly what you want to Don't hold back. Think about what you want to experience when you get on campus. And think about why you're going, of course, at the end of the day, the goal is your academic, um, to achieve your degree and to get your academic um, education all put together. Um, but all of that education is a
<laughs> okay. So do you see? Okay. Hmm. Okay, there I am. Thank you. Okay, so I'm back. Sorry for the disconnection. Um, these things happen. I'm in the Bahamas, and so I'm a long ways away. So you prepare and you apply. And good thing, we're at the end of our presentation, or at my presentation, and so now we're open to Q&A. So please feel free to ask your questions about choosing a U.S. university. Thank you for joining. Okay, so I have a question from Ruben. Um, Ruben is looking for some ma uh, for a master degree, master's degree, and he realized that universities have a cost just to apply, and other ones the application is free. Why that difference? So it's it's really hard to say why. I, a, a lot of universities have a difference. Um, A lot of universities have a difference in the cost um, because they may they may waive the cost because they are trying to um, promote diversity on their campus, and that's one way they they realize that the application um, cost is a big cost for many students, um, and so and some may have funding already um, provided for that particular um, cost, so they're able to, to offer it free of charge. Just to So Anna is from Venezuela, and she said she doesn't have a certificate, but she has a resume that says she can speak English, and she is fluent. How necessary is it to prov provide a proof of profic proficiency when looking for a master's degree? Anna, the question will be for you. Um, you will still have to provide proof of proficiency um, if your degree is not from a U.S. speaking college or university. Um, so you should be prepared to do, um, to take the TOEFL um, because that's the only way that they have proof that you are able to, to speak the language fluently and can function in the classroom. And it's really to protect yourself, um, to make sure that you're not at a disadvantage when you are in front of the classroom that you're able to understand the professors. So yes, um, at the end of the day, yes, you will have to show proof and proof of, and showing proof would mean um, a TOEFL or IELTS um, examination.
Okay, Anna Leon is from South America. She's an architect and wants to study a master's in, in the United States. What resources are available where I can look at universities and their master in architecture? So Anna, I would suggest that you start um, with uh, some online resources. Um, you can use College Board. Org. Um, you could also use Peterson. And CapEx. And don't forget, of course, that Education USA, your education. Um, um, with check with your Education USA Advising Center. She will be able to help you. Um, your advisor will be able to direct you. Um, and if she adds you to um, our weekly um, newsletter, you'll find information um, about master's program in the United States and a lot of scholarship information, actually. So it's a great source of information.
Um, <clears throat> Thank you. 
<clears throat> so we had a break, but here are some questions that are coming in. Um, Omar asks, in addition to GPA and grades with standardized tests, what are colleges looking for in an applicant? Well, Omar, I would say that colleges in general are looking for a well-rounded student. Um, and a well-rounded student can mean many things, but they're looking for someone who has shown um, that they're academically consistent, um, they're able to handle the work and function and do the work, but at the same time, they're going to be um, a presence on campus, so you're going to be your leadership skills are going to be important to them. Um, whether or not you do volunteer or community service, they look at all of those things. Maybe your work experience. They're looking for somebody who can stand out and who's going to actually be a part of their campus life. So I would say um, make sure when you prepare your essays or when you prepare your resume. Um, to go out to the universities that you highlight. Um, all of those wonderful things that you're involved in, whether it's um, through your religious um, community, um, any, anywhere that you may volunteer and, and do service, all of those things matter. All your clubs, those are very, very important. Videos. 
I don't have any video. Okay.